Abi Yehua, I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you that as your trumpets are sounding, as the resurrection of Yeshua has taken place, and as the shofar sound is blowing, I pray, Abba Yehua, that there will be such a sense of your presence upon the earth before it is too late. And so, Abba, I just pray that you alone are the one that is going to be able to come and reveal yourself to your people in this time. Through visions, through, through dreams. Abba, Yahuwah, thank you that you are the door to the sheepfold. We cannot enter through another door. There is only one door. There is only one way. There is only one way in order to be able to come to you. There isn't different ways. There isn't all these roads. There's only one way. There's only one gate. And you are the gate. And you are standing at that gate. And you are opening that gate wide. And you are saying, come and be my sheep. To hear my voice. To be led by me so that you will not be taken out by hirelings, that you will not be taken out by the wolf. Because my sheep, I lead out. I lead out of the place where you will be held captive. I lead out of the place of religion. I lead out of the place of where you have been conformed to this world, I lead you out. And I say, come and follow me. Just like you called your disciples when you said, come and follow me. A disciple lays down all to follow the one who is the rabbi the only rabbi that they are called to follow. The one who has the words that bring life. The one who will bring the deliverance. The one who has come to set the captives free. The one whose presence comes in order to bring truth. So that a voice of a stranger, we will not follow. So Abba Yahuwah, I thank you. I thank you that as we embark on this journey, continuing in the book of Revelation, and as we enter into chapter 4, we are to understand chapter 4 is about a door being opened into a heavenly realm. And we are called to be seated with you in a heavenly realm. We are called to be able to come higher. We are called to be able to come up. We are called to come out and come in. And that door is opened. And in this time, of this very significant time that we are in now, as tonight we start to count the Omar and we start to count our days and for these 40 days before you were taken up we are in this time of where we are now having to be able to know that your presence is dwelling with us on the earth. <coughs> And you have an open door to us now to lead us, to teach us, to guide us where you are shouting with a shout to say, come up and let me show you things that I need to show you for what you need to be able to know for the days that lay ahead of you. Come away from the hilings. <laughs> come away from the wolves. And allow me to lead you. And so Abba Yahuwah, 
I want to thank you, Father, for your deep revelation of your word. I thank you, Abba Father, because this is truly not just reading the book of Revelation, but understanding your pattern and your heart in what you are wanting to reveal. It's not just working through another church, but it's understanding who we are in that church. What are you trying to reveal? What are you trying to show? And now, who are we? What are we doing? What is this about? What is this about these, these um, four living creatures? Who do the four living creatures represent? What does this door represent? What, does, what, 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 what is going on in this heavenly realm for us to understand what it is that you are wanting to reveal? Your pattern. Because everything about the book of Revelation is everything about who you are, Yeshua. You are the pattern. That you are showing us the pattern that we need of the foundations that need to be laid for us to be able to go deeper with you. And so, Abba Father, I stand in awe. As I can understand these 24 elders that stand in awe. The one who is the only one who has the key to open the scrolls. No one else was found worthy. No one else was able to open the scrolls. No one else had that authority. And they stood in awe of you. But do we stand in awe of you? Or have you? we made you just our friend? Someone that we can just take for granted instead of standing in awe of who you are and what you do and how you speak and the authority and the fact that you are set apart and how you want a set apart people. And right now, there's many wolves and there's many hirelings and they are scattering your people and not gathering your people. And so I pray, Father, that you will open up our spiritual eyes today, open up our spiritual ears in order to hear your word, in order to hear what is on your heart through this teaching, to be able to speak to your people, to understand your pattern, to understand what you wanting to say, in the fuller revelation of Yeshua, because this book is about the fuller revelation of who Messiah is. And so, Abba Yehua, I thank you that you help me, Father, to bring forth your word. Open it up to your people that this will not be a word that is going to fall on the rocky soil or going to fall on, on, on scattered by the wayside or fall, fall amongst thorns and thistles. But it's going to be a word that is going to fall on good soil to produce a harvest. And Father, I take authority and I bind every single demonic spirit, every religious spirit that is going to want to operate in order to be able to keep your people bound by deceptive things to not hear your truths. And I thank you, Father, that today you are saying there is an open door you knocked on the one. The, the, the message of the last church was you were knocking at the door. And this one starts with opening the door. The door has been opened. The veil has been torn. The gravestone has been removed. And you have come out of the grave. And you have gone and you are seated at the right hand of the Father to be able to come and bring your people 
into the deep revelation that you have to give. And so I thank you, Abba Father, that we commit this time to you and this word to you for you to have your way. In Yahushua's name I pray this. Amen. Amen. And so praise Abba Father, we are now going to be able to embark on a journey here in Revelation chapter 4 where the Father truly wanted to be able to speak a message today that is really going to be his message. And so we ended off this seven ecclesias, these seven churches, for, re- for us to really understand is it just seven churches or is it seven revelation of mindsets of people groups that we have been exposed to, that we might have seen in our lives and we need to be able to go deep as Father really took us deep for us to understand the revelation of Yahushua through each one of those churches and the kind of people that he's looking for. And so the journey begins, uh, the, so the journey continues as now we get to Revelation chapter 4 and we start reading from verse 1 and it says, After this I looked and I saw a door and having been opened in the heavens, in the heaven, and the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I shall show you what has to take place after this. So understand, we are being beckoned, we are being called. The trumpet is sounding, Messiah is coming, and what are the people doing? And he is right now wanting to be able to open up the mind of our understanding. He is wanting to be able to come and open up the revelation of what we need to understand about a heavenly realm. And there are so many things that's going to take place from here. That that's why we need to understand the revelation of Messiah Yeshua. Because if we do not understand the one who is saying, come up here. The one who they're going to speak about. The one that is seated on a throne. We are not going to be able to embark further. And so he talks about, he saw a door having opened. And so today we are going to focus on the door. What is this door? What is the door about? So we have a look. The door is the word. It's for the concordance reference G2374, which is the word for Thura. And it's opening like a door. It is an entrance. It is a way. How interesting it is a way. It is a passage. So it's a door. It's a passage in the door through which the sheep go in and out. So it is the passage, it is the door through which Messiah Yoshua already spoke that the sheep go in and out. It represents the name of him who brings salvation to those who follow his guidance. An open door is used for opportunity of doing something. So you see, when a door is opened, you are beckoned to go through. You are beckoned to go. There is a passage. There is a way being opened before you. This is the way. Walk you in it. So when a door is opened, there is a movement that needs to take place to go through the door. It's the door of the kingdom of heaven. 
It is a portal. It is an entrance. So there is an opening. A door opens and it closes. And it is a gate. So you see, these are all the things that we need to understand what this door represents. The door represents a way. The door represents an entrance. The door represents a gate. The door represents the one who is the door, who is salvation. And he is the one through whom the sheep may go. He's the one who stands at the gate of the door that is open. The door is the Hebrew letter, which is the Dalet, which is the Hebrew letter number four. Interesting. Yoshua comes from the fourth tribe, which is the tribe of Yehuda. He's the fourth comes from the fourth tribe. The menorah, the center candle, is the fourth candle. And that candle represents the candle that really feeds the other candles, the oil. It's the center candle. And it is the one that's for the feast of Shavuot, which is the feast where we receive the Ruach of Yahuwah which is the oil that must be given. So we need to be filled with that oil. The Dalit means a door. It means an entrance. It means a path. It means a way of life. Please take note of that. Because this door that is opening is the way of life. It's the way that we are to walk. It's the way that he's putting before us to say, this is the way. It is a movement in and out of who is the door. And the one who is the door is Yoshua, who spoke and said, I am the way. And we need to go through the gate. So he's the one that says, I am the way. So when he spoke, he said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. So I am. Who is I am? I am Abba Yahuwah is I am. And Yahushua spoke three times in the garden of Gethsemane. And when they asked him, and they, he said, who are you looking for? And they said, Yoshua of Nazareth. And he said, I am. And when he said, I am, they fell backwards. Because I am is the one who carries all the authority and the power. And he is the way. And so you cannot come through another way. You have to come through the door. He's the only door. And so we must understand that he is this door and we need to go and look at what does it mean for him to be the door. And this is how Father opened this up to me today for us to be able to understand there is a door being opened in heaven. There is a door being opened and we need to understand that this door is a way. It is the entrance. It is the way that the sheep are to enter. So this is a way into a heavenly realm. And he's saying, come up here. So he's calling us to come up. Because there's things that he needs to show. And so when we understand, I am the way, I am the truth, I am a life, it is a pattern of what he was going to give us. And everything about this chapter 4 is giving us into the understanding of the tabernacle. 
And that is what we must understand. Because he's going to speak about the living creatures. He's going to speak about the lion, the calf, the man, the eagle. All of that tied into the tabernacle. All of that tied into the colors that was being shown. And who is the one representing the very door into the way? So you see, if you don't understand the door into the way, you are not going to understand the fullness of Messiah. Because all of this is talking about the seven spirits. It's talking about thunders and lightnings. It's talking about one sitting on a throne. Who is all of this speaking about? Messiah or Shua. So we need to start backtracking and looking and seeing what is he explaining here that's already been explained in scripture of what Messiah or Shua was already revealing to us. So let us go to John chapter 10. Let us go and have a look at where Yeshua starts with his disciples, speaking to them about that he is the door. So we understand that there is a door being opened. We understand that this door is a way. We understand that this door is the guidance that is the one who is at the door is going to give us the guidance that we need because the door is that which the sheep has to go in and out. So we start in John chapter 10 from verses 1. And he says, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter through the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up another way, that one is a thief and a robber. Now, you know, when we look at that, we wanted to understand that only Yeshua is the door, but understand, Yeshua brings a way. So, what you must understand is that there is a way that seems right unto man, but its way will lead to death if the way that you're going to go through that door is not the way that the one who's standing at the door is the one who's leading the way. And if you do not follow the way of the one who stands at the door, then your way, you cannot come in through another way. You have to come in through the way that has already been presented to you. You don't make your own way. You don't build your own golden calf. You don't go your own way. You have to go the way that is already presented to you. Because this is the portal. This is the entrance. This is the way that is going to be able to be the door that is going to reveal the kingdom because the kingdom of Yahuwah needs to be revealed upon the earth. That is the gospel of the kingdom that now needs to be preached. Not just the gospel of salvation, not just the gospel of healing, not just the gospel of deliverance, but the gospel of the kingdom. And the gospel of the kingdom is the full gospel of the understanding of the way. And if we do not understand the gospel of the kingdom being the way, then you are going to be able to be one who's going to try and come in through the side, through another way. You see, there is another way. And the other way could be a golden calf. And you could follow a golden calf way. But that golden calf way is not the way of the sheepfold because there's only one way that is right. Every other way is deception. There's only one way that leads to the tree of life. Every other way continues to lead you into the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So there's many other ways that look good. And that seem good and right unto man, but its way will lead you to death. So, we continue to read. But he who enters through the door is the shepherd of the sheep. So you see, the shepherd of the sheep enters through the door. So you see, every shepherd that is a shepherd of the father, he himself needs to be in the way. 
of that shepherd who is Yeshua himself. So if a shepherd is leading you and that shepherd is not being led by Yeshua himself, by his leading of his voice, by his leading of his ruach, then what I say to you is, what shepherd is leading you? Because a shepherd can only himself go through the door and be led by the only shepherd who is Yoshua. So a shepherd doesn't just arrive and decide he's going to lead the sheep in his way. A shepherd has to hear from the master shepherd to lead the sheep. The doorkeeper opens for him and the sheep hear his voice. So you see, interesting, we are going to look at this through two ways. And the two ways that we're going to look at this is the fact that who is the shepherd? The master shepherd is Yoshua. And he's the doorkeeper. And the sheep will hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Understand clearly. The shepherd is the one who's leading you out. He says, come out from among them. Come out from the mixed seed. Come out of Babylon. Come out of your religious system. Come out of the ways of the world. Come out. Come out. Come out. Our shepherd is calling us out. Now, when I saw this, I thought, wow, Abba. How come I've never seen this word come out before? Now, look at this. Out means to bring forth, to fetch out, out of, to come away from. So he's got to bring forth a people that's come out of something. He's come to fetch us out. He's come to take us away from that which is not of the shepherd. Hear clearly. Hear clearly what he's telling you today. He is the door. There is no other door. Only he is the door. And if it's not led by him, if it's not in his plan, if it's not in his way, then you are going to be led astray. And this is what you're going to understand today very clearly. Very clearly. If you are not going to be able to understand today that you have to only follow a shepherd that is having to hear. Now understand something. Listen carefully again. I'm going to give it from another perspective. The door opens for him and the sheep hear his voice. The doorkeeper opens for him. So the shepherd needs to be the doorkeeper. Those sheep need to discern in their spirit the voice of the shepherd through whoever it is that is going to be the one who's leading them. Because they know the shepherd's voice. So if there is a shepherd that comes amongst the sheep and he speaks from a different voice, the sheep need to have the discernment to be able to discern that that is the shepherd's voice or that's not the shepherd's voice. But you see, the sheep have been lulled to sleep because the sheep are under the sway of a venom of a snake. And that is the venom of the snake is when we are going to eat too much from the tree of knowledge. And that is the tree of knowledge of good. And we start to partake of things that is not of the shepherd, not of the shepherd's way, but a lot of man's teaching and a lot of man's understanding and a lot of religious systems. But at the end of the day, it doesn't bring life. It just piles on more knowledge that puffs the shepherd up that puffs the people up and this becomes very dangerous.
And so the doorkeeper opens him, uh, uh, the doorkeeper opens for him and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name. So you see, the shepherd, Abba Yahuwah, knows his sheep, each one of them by name. He names you. He knows you. And he's the one who leads you out. Now, a true shepherd, one whom the Father has ordained to be able to lead his sheep, are leading the people out from everything that is of mixed seed, everything that doesn't sound like Yoshua, that doesn't act like Yoshua, that's not of Yoshua. Not putting you more into bondage. Not putting you reliant on anything other than on Him. Because you need to be attached back to Him. You need to hold on to the tzitzits of His garment. And be led by Him. Verse 4. And when He has brought out His own sheep, He goes before them. And the sheep follow him because they know his voice. So I ask you, is it the sheep who follows you? I mean, is it the shepherd who, follow, who leads you? Are you following the shepherd? Do you hear his voice for everything of your life? Or do you still go your own way and make your own decisions and then pray that he bless your decision? Do you just come up with your own plan in your own mind to say, well, this sounds like him, this looks like him, this, it must be him, and just go your way and yet do not take the time to really sit down and hear from him to see if this is truly his leading or not. Because there are many that are being led astray by many things because it looks right, it sounds right, but it's not right. Because his way is only one way. And this is what we're going to understand in the time going forward. There's going to be a unity amongst those that are truly in the way. And that way is being led by the shepherd. And that way is in unity with the shepherd. And there cannot be Ten different ways. There's only one way. And when we all humble enough to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of Yahuwah, we will then start to hear the shepherd because there's only one voice. There's only one Ruach HaKodesh. There isn't ten different voices. There's only one voice. And there's only one master shepherd. And if all the shepherds that are called to lead the sheep come back to the shepherd, the shepherd, then those shepherds will only be led by him alone. But you see, the problem is, who are they led by? Whose voice do they truly hear? Do they go back and check? Or are they just going to run wild and loose? Because you see, if a sheep is going to run wild and loose, and it's not going to stay in the sheepfold, <laughs> who's going to come for it? Hmm, the wolf, the fox, the predator that's going to take it out because a sheep has no means of defending itself. A sheep can only rely on the staff and the rod of the shepherd. A sheep cannot defend itself. You cannot defend yourself. Only the shepherd can defend you. And that is why it's so important that we are part of a sheepfold together with other sheep. Because together, as a sheepfold, coming together, we are there for one another. We are there to cover one another. We are there to help one another. We are there to encourage one another. We are there to correct one another. We are there for one another. And together, we are all being led by our shepherd, the only shepherd. Now let's look, continue reading. And they shall by no means follow a stranger, 
but shall flee from him. So do you see? Do you flee from the things that you see that is not right? Or do you continue to stay in the place that you know is not right? That it's not right. It doesn't sound right. It doesn't teach right. It doesn't do anything right. But you will still continue to stay there. Or do you flee? Because truth comes and truth comes and truth comes. And you continue to stay in that which is not right. Why? You open yourself up for mixed seed. You open yourself up to destruction. You will be taken out and we are going to read this. So today, I, we, <laughs> Father is bringing a serious word. Do we continue to stay in things that we know is not right? That we know is not speaking by the mouth of the Father, is not being led by the mouth of the Father, but yet at the end of the day, we go with the flow because it's okay. No, no. No, no, no. He's saying, and you shall by no means follow a stranger, but shall flee from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. You see, a true sheep who is following the shepherd doesn't follow voices of strangers. The minute that voice speaks, they say, ah, 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 that's not my father speaking there. That's not my father. Why? Because his sheep know his scripture. His sheep know his word. His sheep have studied his word. His sheep have studied his way. His sheep have studied how he works, how he moves, how he has his way. His sheep know how the sound and the, the fragrance of his presence. And they know when the fragrance is not his. Yeshua used this figure of speech. But they did not know what he had been saying to them. You see, Yeshua is giving them this example. And they're not quite understanding. But in the days ahead, we were going to have to understand. And Yeshua therefore said to them again, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. He tells you now for the second time, I am the door of the sheep. I am. I am. There is another door. There isn't another way. My way is the highway of holiness. My way is the highway of set-apartness. And we are going to understand set-apart, set-apart, set-apart. My way is the way that is the truth. The way. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. This is my way. There isn't another way. My way is a narrow way. My way is not a broad way. My way does not give room for all these other things. There is a way that is going to seem right to you, but its way in the end is going to lead you to death if you do not stay focused on his way. So he tells you for the second time, I am the door of the sheep. He's the way. There isn't another way. And he, we are called to follow our Messiah, and that means to follow him fully as he walked. Not, okay, I'll take this part of him, but I don't want that part. I'll take the blessing part, but I don't want to take the suffering part. I'll take the one that is going to be the blessed. I am going to be the anointed and the appointed to see the visions, to, to see the dreams, to be the anointed and the appointed, but don't let me have to suffer anything. That is not the way. When you follow the shepherd, you follow the shepherd exactly how the shepherd will walk. Because you are a Talmudim. You are a disciple. And no disciple is greater than his master. And that's what we just did when we washed feet. At the time of Passover, it was a time to wash feet, to say, as I have done for you, so you will do for one another. And understand, as they persecuted me, they will persecute you. As they hated me, they will hate you. If they don't listen to my words, they will not listen to yours. And if they're going to kill me, they will kill you. This is a narrow way. This is not a broad way. All who, be, who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. So you see, there's many robbers. There's many thieves. Why? Because they want to steal our time. They want to steal our money. They want to steal our resources. They want to steal our anointing of the 
walk that we are supposed to have with the Father. They want to come and steal. Oh, you are going to understand. Let me not even go on this one because we're going to get there a lot deeper today. Oh boy, we're going to go deep today. And he says again, I am the door. So this is the third time. In just um, nine verses, he says for the third time, I am the door. Now, can we get the message? I am the door. This door is opening in the heavens. There is an open door. I am the door. And you are going to see the one seated on a throne. You are going to see everything about the living creatures. You are going to understand that this is going to have to be about my tabernacle. You need to become my tabernacle on the earth. Because I am a tabernacle. I want to reveal to you my way. Whoever enters through me, he shall be saved. And shall go in and shall go out and find pasture. So you see, whoever enters through him, there is a salvation. Okay, they're saved. We're going to look into that. But there is a going in and a going out. You will go in and you will come out. You will go in to where he leads you and you will come out of where he leads you. You will go in where he sends you and you will come out of where you are not meant to be. He closes doors and he opens doors. You will go in and you will come out. Because he leads you in through this door. But he takes you out through that door. Because he, this is where you need to be here. But when he closes the door, don't you try and open the door that he closes. Let it close. Now listen to what he says. Saved. What is saved? Saved is the word for Zodezo, G4982. And that Zodezo means to save, to keep safe. You see, again, what happened in the ark with Noah, he had to shut the door. When he shut the door, he kept him safe. Because who is that door? Who is the gatekeeper at the door? None other than Messiah himself. So he doesn't just come to be able to bring you salvation. Understand. He's going to keep you safe. And he's going to keep you sound. He's going to rescue you from danger or from destruction. So do you understand? If you are not being led by your shepherd right now, you will be opened to the destruction that is coming upon the earth because he is the only door that is going to keep you safe. Because that door is the door of salvation. So if you want to keep staying in a place that is not right, that goes astray, that is not the shepherd that needs to basically lead you because they are hirelings. Hmm. They are hirelings. We're going to understand hirelings today. Then you must understand that place is not going to keep you safe because Yeshua says, come out. Come out from everything that doesn't look like me, sound like me, act like me, behave like me and go my way. If you don't go my way, you will be led astray. Because I am the only way. I am the only door. My way is a narrow path. My way is truth. I am the way into what? Into truth. I am the way into what? Into life. You cannot go into truth without going through the way. The way is through Messiah. Messiah shows you the way by giving you the Ruach of Yahuwah. Who is the truth? And the truth will be able to open up the word to you. And the word will open up. And what is not of truth of this word, you are not to follow. Because it is a counterfeit. It is a golden calf. It is another way. It is a way that leads to destruction and deception. It is the way of the enemy. It is the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that brings you to death. So, seduze, seduzo. Sedezo means to save, to keep safe and sound, to rescue from danger or destruction, to save a suffering one from perishing. Wow. To save a suffering one from perishing. 
So you see, even though you might have to die for him, Stephen, at that moment, when he was looking up into the heavens, even though they were stoning him to death, he didn't feel anything because he was saved from the suffering as he was perishing. One suffering from a disease, so he's going to save us from the pestilence and the disease, to make well, to heal, to restore to health, to preserve one who is in danger of destruction. Wow. That is far deeper than just understanding I'm saved by grace. Do you understand? Let's go into the understanding of saved. He wants to keep you safe and he wants to keep you sound. He wants to keep you safe as the sheep in the sheepfold where he's the one who's got the rod and the staff, the staff to guide and the rod to correct. So understand there's always two sides. People only want the, the guidance of Yoshua, but they never want the correction of Yoshua. But he's got a rod and he's got a staff. The staff is going to lead them. He's the leader. He's the shepherd who's leading with the staff. The staff is to lead you in where you need to go. But he's got a rod and the rod is to correct you. The rod is to be able to bring you. He'll break your leg if he needs to break your leg and put you around his neck and he walks with you so that you can be close to him when the sheep go astray many times the shepherd breaks its leg puts it around its neck and then walks close with the little sheep next to it for the little sheep to understand that he really loves him even though he's broken his leg he loves him he's now got him very close to him but the sheep will understand that he's going to have to understand he's not going to do that again and so when the rod of correction has to come, it's for our own good for us to be able to understand that he disciplines those whom he loves for us to understand we will not go that way again. We will not go astray in that way again. And that's why he needs to correct. And so to save is, means to deliver or protect, to heal, to preserve, to make whole. So that is to save. To save is to deliver, to protect, to heal, to preserve, to make whole. So he says, whoever enters through me, verse 9, he shall be saved and shall go in and shall go out and find pasture. So you see, what is that pasture? You feed from him. You find his pasture. And that feeding is the feeding that is going to nourish you because the shepherd that he chooses that's led by him will feed you the nourishment that he gives you which is the manna that he gives you from heaven alone. Not from polluted systems. Not from all these um, man's understanding. But it comes from the mouth of Abba Yahuwah. The thief does not come except now we're going to understand the thief. Okay, so we're going to understand the thief. So who is the thief? The thief is the enemy. The thief does not come except to steal. Okay, what does it mean to steal? To steal is to take away, to take by theft. So the thief wants to take you away from the truth. The thief wants to take you away from the narrow path. The thief wants to take you away from the right way, the way that leads to life. The thief wants to bring you the easy path. The thief wants to bring you in through going in through the back door and not going through the narrow door. So he wants to steal the presence of Abba Yahuwah in your life. He wants to steal the fact that you cannot hear his voice, that you cannot discern. And that is why right now we are in a time of where we have got the serpent coming to one to bring destruction. And that is the thing that the Father has been speaking to me because, I mean, we have not gone and seen snakes in this farm. I mean, I haven't physically seen a snake. And in two days, I saw three physically with my eyes. In two days. Now, there was one out of here a few months ago, and that was in December. There was a snake out here. And other than that, 
I did, and I didn't see it. I was too busy doing the teaching. But on Tuesday, we, I saw two snakes. We saw a puff adder on the road, and then we saw another, like a mole snake, a black one, in the, right in front here of the garden, in the front on the, in the trees. I saw a small black one, a little mole snake. And then the next day, we saw a, um, a boom slung. Is it a boom, a boom uh, a snake? Like a snake of the tree. In Afrikaans, it's called boom slung. It's a, a tree snake. And then this, by this time, I said, Father, what are you trying to talk to me? Three snakes in two days? You trying to tell me something? There's a poison. A snake comes to bring its venom. A venom comes to numb you. A venom comes to paralyze you. And the snake is coming to want to paralyze and to numb you. And how interesting how when that man gave the whole teaching about this, this snake venom, that he said that this whole pandemic was brought in by a snake. And I tell you, if you just understand the revelation that was given to us on Tuesday night, we sat over here till 12 o'clock at night after it's been three snakes in two days. I'm crying out to the Father and saying, what is it with the snake, Father? And by Tuesday night, Father opened up our eyes and gave us revelation that was beyond my understanding. And so we pray that as we're going to open up in the further t chapters of this Bible, we are going to have that revelation unfold to us in terms of this snake. And how interesting, because this is what I discerned already with this pandemic, interesting how this pandemic takes away your sense of smell and sense of taste. So because it takes away your sense of smell and sense of taste, what is that your discernment? So it's to take away your discernment so that you do not know what's right from what's wrong. Because it attacks your five senses, attacks, it attacks your senses of sense of smell and sense of taste, which has really got to do with discernment, smell and taste. And now when this doctor comes up and he tells us that this whole thing when the doctor started saying, but this is like snake venom. The symptoms are exactly like when you've been bitten by a snake. <laughs> and now we come to find out that that's exactly what it is. We're bitten by the snake because they're putting the snake venom in our water to contaminate us. The water that is supposed to bring life. And so if we're not tapped in, to the right source of living water. We are going to drink from the venom of the snake that's going to numb us into the poison that's being given to the people at the moment to bring them into destruction. And this pharmacia plays a big role in it because this is the venom of the snake because it's the sorcery and it's the snake that bit from the beginning. And how does it bite? It bites by getting you to fall into its deceptive scheme, it, to its lies, into its deception. So if we look and see what is the thief's purpose, the thief comes to steal. So he wants to steal our right standing with the Father, our discernment, our being able to hear him, our walking right with him, our walking, uh, walking in the truth, in the way of the Father. It comes to slaughter. Slaughter is to kill. It comes to sacrifice. It wants to kill. It wants to numb us. It wants to kill us. It wants to annihilate us. It wants to, to absolutely get us to become a sacrifice for him as opposed to being a sacrifice for the Father. And then it comes to destroy. Now, wow. When I opened up this word of destroy, now this was a revelation if I've ever received a revelation. Now listen to what the word destroy means. Now, it says, And the thief does not come except to steal, to slaughter, and to destroy. 
Now that word destroy in the in the Greek G6262 is a palm lumi, a palumi. What does it mean? Now I want you to hear these words. I want you to hear them clearly because if you hear these words, you've heard them being preached from a pulpit against the very things that we are trying to walk, which is the way. And today you're going to receive a revelation. It means to put out. It means put out of the way. So it means it's done away. Put out of the way, done away. It means to it means entirely to demolish. To abolish. It means to abolish. It means to put an end to. It means to ruin. It means to render useless. It means to perish. So I want you to hear clearly today. What is it that gets taught us from the pulpit? And in my Bible, if you read um, in the Amplified Bible, that was when I got a fright in my Amplified Bible when I wanted to tear the pages of that that Bible was when they put in brackets and it says he comes to abolish the law. Look at what destroy means. It means to abolish. And now they tell you he came to abolish the law. So that's what the devil wants to do. He wants to destroy by making you believe that the law has been abolished. He wants to destroy by making you believe that it has been put out that it has been t- entirely put away. He wants you to believe that it's been made an end of. It's been put to an end. It's no longer valid. It's been put to an end. That's what it means to destroy. It means it has been put to ruin. It's no longer valid. And listen to what it says. It renders it useless. So it says the new has been made, so the old has been made useless. And these are all the words that gets used in our Bible against the law, which is the way of the father oh, when I saw this this morning I said oh my father this is the devil at its highest degree this is the devil at its highest degree in destroying your people by making them believe that the law has been abolished that it's been put to an end that it has, it's, it's, it's going to bring you to ruin that it is rendered useless that it has perished it's no longer necessary that it's been put away it's been done away with. And that is the word destroy. And that's what the devil does. The devil brings you to destruction. He wants to destroy. And so this is the very word for what the devil is doing to keep us out of the way of following our shepherd. Now listen. I have come that you might possess life. And that they might possess it beyond measure. I have come that you might possess life. Now wait, I'm, I, I want you to see what is the root. Before I continue, the root of Apollo, uh, uh, Apollo me, Apollo me. The root of it is Apo. And listen to what Apo is, which is tied into that word destroy. It means separation, to separate. To separate one thing from another, by which the union or fellowship of two is destroyed. It means to bring distance. And we will feel distant. So listen to what the devil comes to do. He gets us to not follow the way of the truth of coming back to the ways of Torah which is what the foundation is that Yeshua says you need to build a house on the solid foundation. And so by doing that, he comes to be able to destroy, which is going to bring us into separation, which is going to separate us from our shepherd, which is going to be able to break the union that we're supposed to have with our shepherd, and that is going to be able to bring distance between us. And then we don't feel his presence and we are distant. Now, that, to me, was such a revelation this morning. When I stood there and I thought, my father, from where have we fallen? 
And you see, all of this doctrines of demons has been to bring us into separation from the union with our Father. But who is he using? But wait, we're going to get there. So it says, we must possess life that we may possess it beyond measure. So we need to be able to possess life. He's come to give us life and we that we might possess, us, possess it beyond measure. So what is the life? Let's go look at life. When we look at, keep your hand there because we're not finished. Um, let's go look at Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7 from verses 13 to 14, it says, enter through the narrow gate. So you see again, who's the gate? Yeshua is the gate. He's opening the door in the heaven to us, which is, what is that door? That door is the gate. It is the way. It is the path. It is the passage. It is the entrance. It is the portal. It is the gate that is being opened. Now he's telling us, enter through the narrow gate. So you see, there is a broad gate. There is a broad way. But there is a narrow gate. So the way that you walk. Okay, we must understand this. Listen carefully. So understand. We've got to be able to understand this. Okay. Enter through the narrow gate. Because the gate is Yeshua. And his way. Because the gate is wide and the way is broad. So you see, if you don't walk in his way, you walk the broad way. You don't walk the narrow, the narrow path, the narrow gate, because the narrow gate is Yeshua's way. That he's the shepherd who's going to speak, who's going to lead. He's the example. There is no other example. He's the example. And whatever else you're measuring yourself with is the wrong measuring stick if you're not measuring yourself with your Yeshua. Because when people come to me and they say, oh no, my father would never do that. And then let's go back to Yeshua being the measuring stick. Did Yeshua not have to go through that? Because if Yeshua had to go through that, then so will you. And so don't turn around and say, well, that's not my father's way. Because my father's way is however Yeshua walked is how we are going to walk. And that is his way. So we've got to listen carefully. Enter through the narrow gate. The narrow gate is Yeshua. Because the gate is wide. So there is another gate. And that gate is wide. And that's, which gate is that? That's the broad way. That leads to destruction. See? Did you see? Destruction that destroy, that leads to destruction. What is that destruction? It's the destroy, which is the putting away. It's the abolishing. It's the ruining. It's the putting the end of the Torah because this is what they teach you. This is what they're wanting to teach you. So it will lead to destruction because it's the broad way. It's the broad way. It's the broad way that leads you to destruction to bring you to destroy. That's going to separate you from the intimacy of the fellowship of the union of obedience. Because you need to be able to walk with him in obedience. This is deep. But we are going deep to understand. That leads to destruction. And there are many who enter through it. So do you see? There are many who are going to enter through it. Because why? They are not willing to be able to um, be in a place of where they are able to separate themselves when he says come out they don't want to come out they want to stay with those people they want to stay in those churches they want to stay in those fellowships they want to stay in those places that keep leading leading them into destruction because they don't want to go through the persecution because every narrow path leads you to what we're going to understand now the narrow path we're going to understand it because the narrow path is going to lead you into what the narrow path is going to lead you into persecution it's going to bring you to affliction Listen to what it says, because the gate is narrow and the way is hard pressed. So the way that we have to follow Messiah is hard pressed, which leads to life. So you see, you are never going to come into life. You are never going to come into the place of the Holy of Holies. You are never going to be able to come and become the five virgins that carry the oil. Those who will be able to be the set apart ones unto him without you going through that hard pressed way. Now let's 
look at the narrow gate. The narrow gate and the hard-pressed way is the word Thlebo, which is G2346. And this is com a compressed way. <laughs> this is a compressed way. It's a pressed like grapes. It's where you need to be able to be pressed like the grapes. It's where you need to be pressed like the olive press, where you're going to be beaten, where you're going to be able to be shaken. You see, for you to get the olives off the tree, you have to beat them, you have to shake them. You can't just pick them one, one, one. You eventually shake the tree, you eventually beat the tree to get the, 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 the olives right on the top of the tree, especially when the tree has got many, many olives. So we will be shaken, we will be beaten, was he shaken? Was he beaten? It means affliction. It means suffer tribulation. It means we will have trouble. In this world you will have trouble, but I have already delivered you of it all. So you're going to be spared nothing. Because his way is the narrow gate. And the narrow gate is Thlebo, which is the compressed way. Which is the way of Pressing like grapes to get the choicest grape juice out of you. Which is a way of affliction, which is a way of suffering, which is a way of tribulation, which is a way of trouble. Now look at what he says. Because the gate is narrow, so that gate that is narrow, that's Thlebo, and the way is hard-pressed, Thlebo, which leads to life. So you see, life is the holy of holies. I am the way, outer court. I am the truth, holy place. I am the life, holy of holies. So do you want to be an ark that's going to carry his presence? Do you want to be those that are truly going to be able to be following the shepherd wherever he goes, where he is the one who seals you off with his seal, and they, there was no... no Lie found upon their lips and they followed the lamb wherever he went. The 144,000 that he's spoken of on Mount Zion. He says, hard pressed, which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Please make note in your Bible because it says few. You see, because many will not want to go the hard pressed way. Many will not want to go the hard pressed, the um, affliction, the tribulation, the suffering, because they will pray these things away and they will not want the hardships and the difficulties. So life is the fullness of Abba Father in the Garden of Eden, where we only eat from the tree of life. You see, that's why he says, my sheep will hear my voice and the voice of a stranger they shall not follow because they eat from my pasture. They eat from the pasture that is the one, the manna that comes from heaven, that comes from his mouth. Which is the holy of holies, which is the place in which he speaks. That is the place of the Holy of Holies. That's the place. It's the speaking place. So, let's go to 1 Kings, chapter 6. I'm going to read from verses 12, but the scriptures that we want to see is verses 16 and 19, but I'm going to read from verses 12 for you to hear what was it that was spoken to Solomon when building the temple. Because remember, Solomon was building the house of Yahuwah. Now listen, this house which you are building, now we are supposed to become the house that carries his presence. We are supposed to become this tabernacle. And understand, this is everything about what this chapter is about, is understanding where the Father has opened up to me to say, I'm giving you an, ins an, I'm giving you an understanding of a little bit of understanding of heaven. And this heaven is like understanding the tabernacle, a heavenly tabernacle, because it's his way of worship. That's how he wants to be worshipped. He gave us a model. So listen to what he says. This house which you are building, if you walk in my laws and do my right rulings and shall guard my commands and walk in them, then I shall confirm my word with you. Mm -hmm. 
which I spoke to David, and shall dwell in the midst of the children of Israel, and not forsake my people, Yasharal. Let's listen again. This house, he wants a house. He wants a dwelling place. And this dwelling place must be able to be those that will walk in his laws. They will do his right rulings. They will guard his commands. And they will walk in them. They're not those that just hear them. They will be those that walk in them. And they will walk in his commands. And they will hear his voice. And they will walk in the fullness of spirit and truth. Then I shall confirm my word with you, and I shall spoke to da Father David. Now listen to what he does. Then he says, and I shall dwell. He wants a dwelling place. He doesn't want a visitation. He wants a dwelling. And I shall dwell in the midst of the children of Israel, Yasharal, and not forsake my people, Yasharal. Because then we become his people and he dwells in our midst and we become Yasha, Yashar, Al, Yashar Al. So Shlomo built a house and completed it. And he built the walls of the house inside with cedar boards from the floor of the house to the ceiling. He paneled them on the inside with wood and covered the floor of the house with planks of cypress. And he built 20 cubits at the rear of the house from the floor to the walls with cedar boards. And he built it inside. Now listen. And he, and he built it inside at the speaking place as the most set apart place. So what is the most set apart place known as the speaking place? The Holy of Holies is known as the speaking speaking place because you see my sheep will hear my voice it's the place that I want you to be in communion with me in the holy of holies where there's life I am the way out of court I am the truth holy place I am the life holy of holies communion with Abba Father himself and that life is the way that is what the fullness of Abba Father in the Garden of Eden, where we only eat from the tree of life. We hear from Him. We are led by Him. We do what He says. It's the speaking place where He wants to speak, where He wants to lead, where He wants to commune with you, where He wants to lead you and guide you and show you His way. It's the Holy of Holies, and this is the place. Verse 17, and the house was 40 cubits, it is the heckle before it, and the cedar for the house inside was carved with ornaments and open flowers. All the cedar, not a stone, was seen, and he prepared the speaking place in the midst of the house to place the ark of the covenant of Yahuwah there. So the ark of the covenant of Yahuwah is in the speaking place, which is the holy of holies, which is the place where Father wants to commune and speak. So that you're no longer eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but that you are eating from the tree of life. Because this is where life is. This is where communion is. This is where you are. So why are we led astray? Let's continue. Now let's go back to our John chapter 10 and now we're going to see what happens that breaks this communion what happens that keeps us from being able to go through this narrow road which is the place of the heart press to be able to come into the place of life to commune with him in that place because we have our shepherd that we are following and we're not following anyone else but Listen to what happens. He now says, I am the good shepherd. Again, verse 11, for the fourth time, he's telling you, for, door, fourth time, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Will you lay down your life for the shepherd? Because the shepherd laid down his life for him. That's why he said to the disciples, no servant is greater than his master. As I lay down my life for you, you will lay down my life. He, they were going to have to lay down their life for him. But now listen to what happens. 
But the hyaline, <laughs> but the hyaline, the hyaline, and not being a shepherd, one who does not own the sheep. So you see, the hyaline does not own the sheep. Now, what is a hyaline? So I went and looked at this word hyaline. Now listen to this. A hyaline is one who works for wages. Mm -hmm. He does what he does for money. He's hired for money. So a hyaline are the shepherds that are working for the money that's got to be given to them in all the money that they're receiving, all the things that keep them going. That is a hyaline. A hyaline is one. A hyaline is one hired as a wage worker. They work for wages. That is a hyaline. He does what he does for money. He's hired for money. So how many shepherds, prophets, apostles, pastors, priests, name it, Claim it, frame it, all for money, leading his sheep astray. Because they do it for the money. They are still getting the money. It's all about money. It's all about the gold. It's about the silver and the gold and the fame and the fortune. And they don't care for the sheep because look at what's going to happen now. Listen, the highly not being a shepherd, they're not the shepherd because a shepherd loves the sheep. A shepherd does what he does because he loves the people. A shepherd does what he does because he will, lead, he will give his life. He will lay down his life for the people. He will do everything in his power because he wants to see the people become everything that they can become in the Father. And they will lay down their lives. For the people. Just like the shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. So a shepherd, a true shepherd, will lay down his life for the people. To make sure that the people can become everything that they are to be for the father. Not because of anything for himself. It's not because he needs to be seen. It's not because he needs to be heard. It's not because he needs to be um, needed. It's got nothing to do with him. Everything he does is to make sure that those sheep become everything that he's created, that the Father has created them to be. But yet, the hyaline, he's one who does not own the sheep. And he sees the wolf coming. And leaves the sheep and flees. So at the end of the day, those that now are leading many sheep and leading them astray, when they see the destruction coming, they are going to run. And they are going to leave those people without a shepherd completely. Because they will run for their own lives and they will not care for the sheep. And they will be about themselves. And they will not prepare places for the sheep. And they will not prepare anything for the sheep they are going to be those that don't care for the sheep because they only did what they did for them to gain the money that they got. And so at the end of the day, these are the hilings. And now listen to what happens. And then the wolf comes in and the wolf is cruel and the wolf is greedy because the word for wolf is lukos. G3074. And the wolf is cruel, greedy, destructive man. And so what does this wolf do? The wolf snatches the sheep and scatters them. So what is happening with the hirelings and the sheep? I mean the hirelings and the wolves? The hirelings and the wolves are scattering the people. And why are the people being scattered? Because they don't have truth. They're not truly following the shepherd. The only reason why there's so many divisions amongst us is because the devil is scattering us. And why does he scatter us? Because the shepherds are not truly hearing the voice of the Father. And the more the shepherds do not hear the voice of the Father, the more the sheep are being scattered. Because they don't really care for the sheep. They care for their fame. They care for their fortune. They care for people to see them and know them. And it's about their ministries. And it's about them. 
and they don't really care for the people. It's about another prophetic vision and another prophetic word and it's about whatever and it's not really about bringing people into the fullness of knowing the shepherd, of hearing the shepherd's voice, of knowing the shepherd's truth of his word to bring them into a place where they will not be taken out by a wolf. The only way that we're not going to be taken out by the wolf is when we know the voice of our shepherd and when we have the right shepherds bringing us into the way because you see these shepherds will be the ones to say to you but you don't have to go through anything you're going to fly out of here you are not going to go through anything you're not going to suffer anything you're not going to go through any affliction you're not going to go through any of these things no 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 they don't want you to go through anything they want to keep speaking the nice positive things in your ears and not ever warn you of anything and that is exactly that teaching that I want that I listened to now this last week I listened to this thing about when the messages started coming out, when these people were in the Titanic, and the messages started coming out to be able to warn the people, and they didn't want to give them any warning because the people were enjoying themselves. So because the people are enjoying themselves, let's not warn them of anything. Let's not warn them of the destruction that is coming. Let's not warn them about the serpent things. Let's not warn them about all these things. Let's not rebuke anything. Let's just speak the nice positive thing. Let's not let them understand that they're going to have to go through suffering and affliction and all these things. No, let's not speak these things. Let's just keep giving them nice, positive words. Well, that is not the Father's way. Because the Father has a shepherd, has a staff, and he's got a rod. And he's going to correct, and he's going to lead. He's going to rebuke and correct, and he's going to lead. And that is why the sheep are being scattered. Why? Because the sheep are listening to hirelings. Those who don't really care for the sheep. They don't even have their own sheepfold. They don't care for the sheep. They do what they do because there's mammon that drives them. Mammon is everything that's not just mammon of being the wealth, but mammon that this world has got to give them that is making them become very powerful and very important and it becomes about them and their ministries and their churches and their tithes and their offerings and all these things that they're getting and then it's all the works but at the end of the day not bringing the people into any truth and now the hireling flees because he is a hireling and is not concerned about the sheep so you see, what is going to happen in the days ahead? You are going to see these hirelings, they're going to start falling one after the other when the destruction is going to come. They're going to start falling one after the other. And instead of them being those that were supposed to be preparing the way for the sheep to be able to come into a place of protection, into a place of being able to know that they can be protected from the, from the, 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 the wolf that is going to take them out. Instead, where are they? The hireling is going to leave them. They're going to leave them high and dry and people are going to be running around and there's going to be a great falling away. And I am the good shepherd. He says it for the fifth time. I am the good shepherd. I know mine and mine know me. So you see, oh my goodness, that's what I keep saying. Those that are his, he knows those that are his from those that are not. Those that are his are truly following him. Those that are his truly love him. Those that are his are willing to lay down their life for him. Even as the Father knows me. And I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. He tells you again, I lay down my life for the sheep. So a true shepherd will lay down his life for the sheep. Nothing is ever too much for a shepherd. A true shepherd. Nothing is ever too much for that shepherd. Because everything about that shepherd is to make sure that the sheep are being fed from the green pastures that he has to give them. And that is the Father's heart. And that is why he said in Isaiah, when we did that teaching about the shepherds, and he says, I will give you shepherds after my heart. I will give you the shepherds that are after my heart. Isaiah chapter 56, verses 10 to 12. Let's go read it. Isaiah chapter 56 verses 10 to 12 and it says, His watchmen are blind, all of them 
they have not known. All of them are dumb dogs, unable to bark, dreaming, lying down, loving to slumber. And the dogs have strong appetite. They never have enough. And they are shepherds. They have not known understanding. All of them look to their own way. So you see, these are the shepherds that look to their own way. They don't teach you the way of the Father. They don't teach you the truth of the Father. They prefer even to, even on this path, even on the set apart Torah path, there are the shepherds that want to listen to the, the rabbis and the rabbis' teachings. And then they start to bring mixed seed into the people. And then the people don't know what is the truth from what is the lie. So then the rabbis start to tell you, oh no, Cain um, was actually, uh, um, he was a child that came because uh, 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 Satan slept with Eve and she gave birth to the serpent seed of Cain. Cain was the serpent seed from a union that came from Adam, uh, from Eve and the serpent. What rubbish. Where do they get this from? And then people actually believe it. No, Cain was the, the, the offspring that had a decision to make because he's going to have a will, a mind, a will and emotion and he's going to have to make a decision to follow the Father. Like now, we all have wills to make a decision to follow the Father. That's why Yeshua said, sin is knocking at your door and you have the authority to master over him. We all have the serpent seed that is within us because we all fell. But we have the decision to make in order to follow the Father. So he says, all of them like their own way, every one of his own gain. You see, listen, and all the dogs have strong appetite and they never have enough. And they are shepherds. They have not known understanding. So these shepherds do not know understanding. All of them look their own way. Every one for his own gain from his own end, saying, come, let me bring wine and fill ourselves with strong drink, and tomorrow shall be as today, even much greater. So they continue to take us into the unclean things. They continue to teach us to eat what's unclean. They continue to take us into the things that's unclean. There's no set-apartness. There's no coming out of anything that is unclean. But the Father is wanting to be able to give us shepherds that are after his heart. And so we must understand that he is wanting shepherds that are going to be shepherds that come from his heart to be able to come and lead the people in the right way. And so we continue to read in chapter 10, John chapter 10, and other sheep I have other, other not of this fold. So what is he saying? I have other sheep not of this fold. So you see, he's talking to his disciples there. He's talking to his own people. But what is he saying? Don't worry, I have others that are going to be grafted in. Right now, they might be scattered in the nations of the world, but they are still my sheep. I have other sheep, which are not of this fold. I have to bring them as well, and they shall hear my voice, and they, sh and they, and they shall be one flock, one shepherd. So do you see, all this division amongst us, who brings the division who is bringing all this division amongst us? Who is bringing all the separation? Well, let's look and see. What did we see? We saw the wolf snatches the sheep and scatters them. You see, and why does he scatter them? Because he brings them into deception. But in John chapter 10, he says, there's only one shepherd and there's only one, there's only one shepherd. And he's the one that's going to shepherd the flock. Because the flock hear his voice. The flock are led by him. So all the flock that are truly hearing him, they are walking the truths of the things. They're not divided by all these different doctrines, are they? No, they're coming back to the truth. He says, because of this, the Father loves me. Because I lay down my life in order to receive it again. You see, again, he tells you, I lay down my life. How many times is he telling you, I lay down my life? No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to receive it again. This command I have received from my father. Again, there came a division amongst the Yodim because of these words. You see, the minute truth gets spoken, what happens? Division, division, division. Because one wants to go that way, because they're listening to what? A hiling that comes to be able to bring them doctrines that's not of the word. So we want to go astray and now follow some other kind of a doctrine. 
But instead of us praying and coming back to the Father and asking the Father, is this really what you're saying? Is this really what the Word says? Is this really scriptural? But no, we go astray. And many of them said, he has a demon. So you see, when we really want to do what's right, what do we get accused of? We have a demon. And he's mad. Why, why do you listen to him? So you see, people do not want to listen to those that are truly following the Father. They will try and lead you astray from the one who's really listening to the Father. They will say, don't listen to him. You know what? Look at what he's done here and done there. Or look at what she's done here and done there. And they want to lead you astray. Because they don't really want you to listen to truth. Because you see, truth sets you free. And the devil doesn't want you to stay in the path of truth. Others said, these are not the words of one possessed by a demon. Is a demon able to open the eyes of the blind? So you see, what, is, what was he doing? He was opening the eyes of those who are blind so that they can see the truth of the word for what it is. At that time, Hanukkah came to, to be in Yerushalayim and it was winter. And Yahushua was walking in the set-apart place in the porch of Shlomo. So the Yehudim surrounded him and said to him, How long do you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, say to us plainly. Yahushua answered them, I have told you and you do not believe. The works that I do my, in my Father's name, they bear witness concerning me. But you do not believe because you are not my sheep, as I said to you. So you see, there are many that think they are his sheep that are not his sheep. That's why there's many that is going to come knock on their door and say, but Yahushua, I cast out demons in your name. I prophesied in your name. And what is he going to say? I do not know you. You, trap, you practiced lawlessness. You practiced iniquity, lawlessness, anomia, one without the Torah. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep, as I said to you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. May this be the word that we need to hear today. The door is opened. Yeshua is now on the earth. He is now at the time of when he's revealing himself now in this time of leading up to Shavuot for 40 days he was walking with the disciples on the earth. He is saying to us, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give them everlasting life. See, I give them everlasting life. What is everlasting life? To know him, to yada him, to know him, to know him is everlasting life. What does it mean to know him? It's the word know is the word yada, to perceive, recognize, understand, become acquainted with him as a husband and a wife. That is the intimacy like it was with a husband and a wife. My sheep, I give them everlasting life. Why does he give them everlasting life? Because they know him. My sheep, I know them. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give them everlasting life. Why does he give them everlasting life? Because what is everlasting life? Everlasting life is in John chapter 17. Go quickly a little bit forward to John chapter 17 so we see where's everlasting life. What is everlasting life? Go look quickly, John chapter 17. John chapter 17 verses 3. So you know what everlasting life is. And this is everlasting life. That they should know you, the only true Alua. Your sure Messiah whom you have sent, I have esteemed you on earth, having accomplished the work you have given me that I should do. So what is everlasting life? That they should know you, the only true Alua, and Yahushua whom you have sent. So what is everlasting life? Everlasting life is to know him. So what does he do? He gives them everlasting life. What is that? To know him. So because they follow him, they will know him. And that word know is the word in Hebrew called yada, and that word is to perceive, recognize, understand, become acquainted with him as a husband and a wife in intimacy. I give them everlasting life, and they shall by no means perish, and no one shall snatch them out of my hand. No devil will be able to snatch you 
or scatter you out of his hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them. Second time he says it. No one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. Praise Abba Yahuwah. That is the open door. We are to come into that place of everlasting life. And that place of everlasting life is to know Abba Yahuwah, know Yahushua Messiah, to follow Messiah, and Yahushua is bringing us back to the Father to eat from the tree of life. The everlasting life is eating from the tree of life, which is the intimacy in the Garden of Eden, which is that intimacy, that place. And that place is only going to come when we are walking in his way. Let us pray. Abba Yahuwah. Oh, my Father. I thank you for your word, my Father. I thank you for the mighty revelation that you have given from your throne in this day to understand these end time revelations of what you want to share with your people. Father, I am humbled before you. That you are so mindful of us. That you would open up to us the word of this understanding because you see the shepherds had no understanding and because they had no understanding why did they have no understanding because they 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 like hirelings they on their hearts is not for the sheep their hearts is for gain so why should they have understanding why should you give them understanding but your true shepherds father are going to have understanding and they are going to open up your heart to your people for them to come back to you, to have everlasting life. You want to give us that everlasting life, that place to know you, because everlasting life is to know you, and that we will truly know you in intimacy, to walk with you. Because in this chapter 4, <laughs> what are those our 24 elders, what are they praying? Holy, 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 set apart, set apart, set apart. Mm -hmm. Three times, set apart, set apart, set apart. And only those that are going to be set apart are truly going to see you. Without set apartness, no one is going to see the Father. And that is what we read two weeks ago. And so, Father, I just want to thank you for your word. I want to thank you for the deep revelation of your word. I want to thank you for exposing to us what our hiling is. And the wolves, these wolves that come in sheep's clothes, they think and they make out that they are sheep. But yet at the end of the day, deep within their hearts, they have something else that drives them apart from your ruach. They might speak by your mouth, but yet their hearts are led astray by fame or fortune. And so, Abba Yahuwah, I pray that you help us to be able to truly be those sheep that will be able to hear your voice and only enter through the gate that is your gate. And your gate is the narrow path. There isn't another way. And that is the way of understanding the outer court, the holy place, the holy of holies, and how the enemy is wanting to take us on a broad way where everything goes and everything is fine and we just need to be able to receive a Jesus and everything's going to be fine. How lied we have been to. We have been lied to. We have been lied to, Father, in so many different ways. We have seen that the enemy has come to destroy. He truly comes to kill, to steal, and to des destroy. And he's come to destroy the narrow way. And he's come to destroy us from the true path of following you. 
But I thank you, Father, that we are in a time now of restoration and healing. And truly, you will have a sheep that will be in your fold. And that will not listen to any other stranger's voice. And I praise and I thank you for this in Yahushua's name. Amen. Thank <clears throat> you.